Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. The Ministry for Education, Science and Technology halts the President Educational Reform Program, citing lack of budget. The government makes preparations to open Tamil and Darumarg area for 24 hours. Tourism entrepreneurs welcome the decision. Six people presumed dead in the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Search and rescue efforts called off. U.S. President Biden says his government will cover the entire cost of rebuilding the bridge. And Bahrain defeats Nepal 3-0 to advance closer to the FIFA World Cup 2026 qualifiers and the AFC Asian Cup Saudi Arabia 2027 finals. The Ministry for Education, Science and Technology has halted the President Educational Reform Program, citing difficulty in its implementation. The Ministry has said that less budget has been allocated for the program this fiscal year compared to last year and that previously implemented programs had not yielded desired results. The move has been attributed to the delay in selection of schools and inadequate time for construction of infrastructures. The ministry has decided to make preparations for allocation of budget to local levels for construction of school buildings and operation of information technology lab and technology related curriculum during the budget formation from the upcoming fiscal year. The authority has geared up to urge the Ministry of Finance to allocate budget to set up model community schools in the settlements of Mushahar and Chepang, among other marginalized communities. The government entity has also said that it will urge the Finance Ministry to arrange budget for the reconstruction of school buildings that have been damaged by earthquake in Zazarkot and Bachang. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs Narangaji Shrestha met with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi yesterday. At the meeting, the two leaders evaluated on the bilateral relation, expressed commitment to strengthen it and also dwelt on the implementation of various projects that were agreed upon during Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal's China visit. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has said efforts have been made to scrap the loans taken for the construction of Pokhara International Airport. Minister Shrestha is also to hold meetings to discuss on the implementation of BRI and the potential for other collaborations. Earlier in the day, Minister Shrestha had extended invitation to Chinese investors for the investment summit, saying that Nepal is an ideal destination for Chinese investors to invest on and that the Nepal government was willing to facilitate investments. Minister Shrestha is on a nine-day state visit to China as he is also scheduled to attend programs at Chongqing, Tibet and Sichuan province. Thousands of workforce in the healthcare sector, including doctors, nurses and other health professionals are generated in Nepal annually. However, health institutions across the country report lack of skilled staff. The government has been unable to mobilize the required number of workforce, even though the country generates around 12,000 graduates from 90 different med medical education institutions from across the country. Around 6,500 medical students get enrolled in 90 different medical institutions across the country annually for undergraduate, postgraduate and higher education. 11 diploma level medical programs are conducted in 285 educational institutions under the Council for Technical Education and Vocational Training CTEVT. This generates around 5,500 medical professionals. 30,000 MBBS doctors and 4,883 BDS dentists have been registered so far at the Nepal Medical Council. Likewise, there are 10,588 specialized doctors in the country. A total of 105,000 nurses, including specialized nurse nurses, have been registered at the Nepal Nursing Council. Meanwhile, there is no data on those who still are in the country. Furthermore, there are 5,614 professionals in Ayurved. 137,683 medical professionals have been registered at the Nepal Health Professional Council. 
According to the entity, permission had been granted for education abroad to 1,672 for MBBS program, 592 for medical specialist and 350 for nursing between the fiscal year 2077-78 and 2080. The Council has projected that 63,225 health professionals are currently required for the country. Data show that educational institutions have been generating the required workforce. However, the government has failed in their proper management. In this context, in our public voice segment, we had asked in several provinces, how easy is it for them to find doctors at their local levels? Let's take a look at what they had to say. सामान्य बिरामीको लागि त त्यति धेरै चाहिँ चासो दिए जस्तो लाग्दैन जटिल केसमा चाहिँ नि सेवा र सुविधा चाहिँ राम्रो छ नर्सहरु त बिजनेस गरिराखेछन् कहिले एकदमै गडी पलाइन भएन उनीहरुको स्यालरी नि कम भएर जसरी चाहिँ बिरामीको टेक केयर गर्न पनि थियो समयमा जान पर्ने थियो त्यस्तो काम भएको छैन बिरामीको अवस्था अब इमर्जेन्सीमा कुरी राख्दा खेरि पनि डाक्टर नर्स खोज्न जानु पर्ने बोलाउन जानु पर्ने अवस्था रहेको छ ग्रामीण क्षेत्रको स्थानीय तहहरुमा so, how do you find doctors or nurses? In the hospital, they have to find a place in the hospital. They have to find a place in the hospital. There are doctors, there are four or five doctors. There are MD doctors, there are MD doctors. There are no other nurses. There are no other nurses. In the hospital, there are no other nurses. There are no other nurses. कोयले कहीं तो बेटी इंसान कोयले कहीं से बेटी थे ना कोयले जी ना बेटी के बिलाची अब तेजी मेडिकल तीरा गए रहो सिद्धि की निरा फर्क नहीं पड़ने आवश्यक नहीं उनसे आवश्यक थी मतलब हम लोग गांव घर में आए रहा था बेटी इंसान आए जो बुशार भी नाम रहा उनसे नर्स लोग डॉक्टर को सुविधा ऑलीली पाई रहे जो पूरे पूर्ण रूप से हमें पाई रहे चाहिए ना नर्स को सुविधा ठीक सा डॉक्टर को हेल्थ चक्राई वाली बॉडी सा दरबंद जो जाकर डॉक्टर चाहिए ना रूप चार रूप में देरी आह हमें लाख सहार चाहिए ना Search for a youth who had gone missing after jumping into the Karnali River from Chisapani Bridge has continued for the third day today. Chief District Officer of Kailali Dharmendra Kumar Mishra said that security personnel from Nepal Police and Armed Police Force has been have been deployed for the search of the missing individual. He said that divers have also been mobilized under the coordination of Bardia administration. 17 youths had dived into the river on Monday while 30-year-old Lokendra Shahi of Chisapani of Lamki Chuha of Kailali had been missing since then. Police had interrogated six youths yesterday. The police inspector of Chisapani Area Police Office, Hariram Dangi, said that the remaining youth will also be summoned for interrogation. An individual has died in a fire-related incident in Bigu Rural Municipality, Ward No. 7 of Tolakha. The deceased has been identified as Karga Bahadur Shrestha of Bigu, Khopa Chanu. Police have said the fire started in a, at a shop at around 3 a.m. early this morning. The shop has been completely destroyed while goods worth 400,000 rupees has been damaged. Singati area police have said that the cause of the fire has yet to be identified and that investigation is underway. Tourism entrepreneurs have become elated after the government started making preparations to open Tamil and Darwamarg area for 24 hours. The implementation of the decision, however, is challenging. The coordinating coordination committee has been preparing criteria for this. Security must be tightened for this. However, the government say that it is the responsibility of business owners. Tamil Tourism Development Council has geared up to install 400 street lights and CCTV cameras at various places. Meanwhile, the coordination committee has been working on identifying the possible effects of this move in the community and management of traffic during nighttime. Preparations are underway to declare Tamil a vehicle restricted area. The government's decision to open the two central and tourism areas of the capital is expected to put a positive impact in business and generate employment opportunities as well. However, such decision was made in the past as well. Time now for international update. A major bridge in the U.S. city of Baltimore has collapsed into the Patapsco River after a container ship crashed into it. 
The U.S. Coast Guard said six people who were on the bridge are presumed dead and search and rescue efforts have been called off. The bridge snapped and plunged into the water at about 1.30 p.m. local time, along with vehicles and people. The ship is now wedged into debris from the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which is three kilometers long and part of a major highway. It suffered a power issue and issued a distress call moments before the crash, officials say, but was traveling too quickly to change course. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said the bridge will be rebuilt in a way that remembers the people this tragedy has impacted. President Biden has said his government will cover the entire cost of rebuilding the bridge and getting the port functioning again. Attacks continue and the situation on the ground remains dire despite a UN Security Council resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza during Ramadan. Hamas says Israel is losing political cover and protection even in the Security Council and the US is unable to impose its will on the international community. Israel's military claimed that it killed Hamas commander Marwan Issa in an airstrike earlier this month. A Hamas Politburo official said it has no evidence of the death and accused the enemy of psychological warfare. Israeli tanks and armored vehicles surround a hospital in Khan Yunis as the Palestine Red Crescent Society reported that another facility went out of service because of military operations. At least 32,414 Palestinians have been killed and 74,787 wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7. The death toll in Israel from Hamas's October 7 attack stands at 1,139, with dozens still held captive. Riot police dispersed hundreds of Jordanian demonstrators marching towards the Israeli embassy in Amman yesterday in support of Palestinians in Gaza. Protesters chanted slogans and waved Palestinian flags, chanting betrayal as police tried to push them back from the heavily fortified Israeli embassy. The Israeli embassy were, where protesters gather daily has long been a flashpoint of anti-Israel protests at times of turmoil in Gaza and the occupied Palestinian territories. Israel has launched strikes and shelling in Gaza that have killed over 32,000 Palestinians, according to the enclave's health authorities, the worst conflict between Israel and Hamas, an Islamist group that runs the territory. A suicide bomber rammed a vehicle into a convoy of Chinese engineers working on a dam project in northwest Pakistan yesterday, killing six people, police said, the third major attack on Chinese interest in the South Asian country in a week. The first two attacks targeted a Pakistan naval air base and a strategic port used by China in the southwest province of Balochistan, where Beijing is investing heavily in infrastructure projects. The engineers were en route from Islamabad to their camp at the dam construction site in Dasu in the province of Khyber Pakhtwan, regional police chief Muhammad Ali Gandapur said. Chinese engineers have been working on a number of projects in Pakistan, with Beijing investing over $65 billion in infrastructure works as part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor under Beijing's wider Belt and Road Initiative. No one claimed responsibility for yesterday's attack. Thousands of people protested in Budapest near Parliament, demanding the Chief Prosecutor and Prime Minister Viktor Or Orban resign after a former government insider accused a senior aide to Orban of trying to interfere in a graft case. Protesters marched from the Chief Prosecutor's office towards Parliament, shouting, Resign, Resign! 43-year-old Peter Magyar, a lawyer formerly close to the government, said Hungary was in its greatest political, moral and legal crisis since the fall of communism. He plans to launch a new party to challenge Orban. Magyar earlier published a recording of a conversation with Judith Varga, then his wife and Hungary's justice minister, in which she detailed an attempt by aides to Orban's cabinet chief 
to remove certain parts from documents in a draft case. The case is centered on former Justice Ministry State Secretary Paul Wallner, who was charged in 2022 with accepting bribes from the former head of the court, Balifis Gorkshald. Both have pleaded not guilty. Prosecutors are seeking jail terms for the pair. Prosecutors said in a statement they would analyze the tape with Magyar Said, which Magyar said he recorded in January 2023 and further evidence would be collected. In the audio tape recorded in the then couple's home and published on Magyar's Facebook page, Varga says aides linked to cabinet chief minister Antal Rogan suggested to prosecutors that should be what should be deleted from the documents. The allegations come at a politically sensitive time for Orban ahead of European parliamentary elections in June and follow a sex abuse scandal that brought down two of Orban's political allies, the former president and the Varga last month. The Ecuadorian president, Daniel Noboa, visited police in the port city of Guayaquil following an operation against organized crime that saw 17 people detained and property seized. The National Police of Ecuador reported the operation started yesterday at dawn with an aim to take on crimes such as extortion, weapons possession, kidnapping and drug trafficking. Noboa arrived at police facilities wearing a helmet and bulletproof vest and escorted by uniformed agents. The raid took place in the Socio Vivienda neighborhood where organized crime groups are allegedly engaged in a power struggle as they utilize buildings for drug storage and as safe houses. The agents raided 130 buildings and seized 52 kilograms of drugs and firearms, among others, the police wrote on social media platform X, formerly Twitter. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. The Ministry for Education, Science and Technology halts the President Educational Reform Program, citing lack of budget. The government makes preparations to open Tamil and Darumarg area for 24 hours. Tourism entrepreneurs welcome the decision. Six people presumed dead in the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Search and rescue efforts called off. U.S. President Biden says his government will cover the entire cost of rebuilding the bridge. And Bahrain defeats Nepal 3-0 to advance closer to the FIFA World Cup 2026 qualifiers and the AFC Asian Cup Saudi Arabia 2027 finals. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good day.